So this question here is awesome because it touches on the capital budgeting chapter, but we're taking a really, really deep look into the internal rate of return and the different implications that an IRR can have for you, especially on a final exam, assessment, or group project within an intro to finance course during your undergrad, or even perhaps an MBA class that you may have or a CFA level one course. So it's really important to understand what we're going to look at here. Here we're going to look at IRRs for two different projects that are mutually exclusive, but more especially, we're going to look at the crossover rate, the intersection between these two different projects. And trust me, this is something that I've seen several times on final exams, so you really want to be able to understand how to do this. Now, in these types of questions, as you can see here, you're going to have a lot of noise, right? In this question, they're telling you, hey, you work in the finance department of Tesla and your bus, your bus, your, bo your boss, has staffed you with evaluating two mutually exclusive and risky uh, projects. You have project model X and you have project Roadster FE. You notice that you know, there's a bunch of fluff here. If you wanna highlight it in, in yellow, you have you know, a brand new affordable SUV, blah, 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 to compete with Honda, Toyota, and Nissan. For you on, a, on an exam, that means nothing. You don't even care about that. What really matters for us, and I'll highlight it here in green, is that the project, right, project model X, has an IRR of 12.8%, okay? And we can find the same thing for the Project Roadster, which we noticed that that project has an IRR of 13.7%. Now I'll go ahead and kind of highlight in, in yellow the info. Ah, no, nah, we'll just keep what matters in green. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to call Project Model X Project A, just to make it easier for us to remember. And Project Roadster, we're going to call it Project B. Okay. Such that within the question, when I refer to Project Model X, I'll just say Project A. It'll be quicker and easier. And the same thing goes for Project Roadster FE, which we're going to mention as just simply being Project B. Now, if we go below these two bullet points, they're telling you that note that both projects will have the same NPV. Okay, They're going to yield the same NPV when the discount rate is equal to 5.8%. Now, given all of that information, they want you to do something very particular. Okay, they want you to draw a graph displaying the relationship between the NPV of these projects and their IRR. Okay, that's the first step. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in red because what I highlight in red usually is what I like to call our mission, the purpose of this question. What are we looking for? What are we solving for? And in this question, you'll see I really, I'll really walk us through the different steps to take here. So they want to know what is the relationship between NPV and IRR. We need to draw a graph for that. But they also want to highlight when does project A yield a higher NPV than project B. Okay, so this is an interesting one. On an exam, you may not know what to do, and you kind of may just, you know, roll the dice and see what happens. But this stuff is actually mad easy. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to just highlight all of the percentages, okay, all of the discount rates, all of the returns, I guess, that were provided. So this is extremely easy. You know here that they gave you an IRR of 12.8%. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight that. So we're gonna have IRR for project A. It's gonna be equal to 12.8%. And we're gonna go ahead and highlight the IRR of project B, which is 13.7%. The reason why we're gonna highlight this is you're gonna see why. Some cute stuff, it's some high level stuff that's gonna you know, help you out a lot. So, you know, on an exam, I'm a big fan of just highlighting stuff. It just it makes it easier for you. It's a skill that I always use even to this day when I deal with projects that are, you know, for ESMA helps or my, you know, my professional work or whatever the case may be. It's really important to just highlight stuff, figure out what's your mission, figure out what's the data that you have, and then you work from there. So we're going to call the crossover point, I guess we'll call it C. Or yeah, crossover point. I like to call it C, why not? You know, it's whatever. This is not an official notation, but it works. So we have all of our three variables. Now what we're going to do in the next step is going to be pretty cool is we're just going to draw a line. And you're going to see why this matters because it's going to allow you to find, well, hey, when is one project better than the other one? You'll see in just a second. So I'll go ahead and stop here. Okay. This is something that the more you do it, you won't even need to draw a line anymore. It'll be actually quite simple. So um, we'll go here. We'll draw a line like this okay and this line will represent k all right once again i want you to remember i will take a step back too what is an internal rate of return the internal rate of return is the discount rate 
that's going to give you an NPV that will be equal to zero. All right. The internal rate of return is a discount rate that's going to yield an NPV that's equal to zero. It's going to essentially give you the NPV that's going to make you indifferent, in which your initial investment is equal to the present value of your future cash flows. It's a pretty important thing to look at. I'm not going to dig too deep into the, into the proof because there's a next video that will actually do so. But that's what the IRR is. And what we're going to do is we're just going to write down these IRRs onto this line displaying all of the Ks. So in this case, we're going to put, call it, I don't know, here, we're going to put project A, which has an IRR of 12.8%. And here, I guess I'll put project B. Okay, here we're going to have project B, which has an IRR of 13.7%. So the K is equal to 13.7%. So once again, remember, an IRR is still a discount rate. It's just a very specific K. It's a K that's more unique than any other Ks out there, okay? And then we're going to write our C. Our C is, I guess, because there's only a small gap here, we're going to put it like here. Okay, this will be C at 5.8%. Okay. Now, theoretically, I guess we'll have like zero somewhere here. Now, for sure, my like the way I'm doing this isn't you know the most official way, but you get what I'm trying to do. So we'll have zero percent here. So you can notice that we have our crossover point. So the point at which the NPVs will be equal to the same thing is way far back. And then you notice that the points at which the NPV will be equal to zero for Project A and Project B are kind of close together. Okay. Now, the reason why this is interesting, all right, if we want to add a little line here, so I'll go ahead and draw a line here. I guess we'll have to move our stuff a little bit. You'll see why this matters. So we can draw another line that's going to be super, super duper important. And that's going to be the line displaying the, whoops, the NPV. Okay, so we're going to draw a vertical axis. Okay, so we're going to draw a second dimension in which we're going to be able to display the NPV. So here we're going to write NPV. Now they didn't give us the NPV for project A, nor did they give us the NPV for project B. Okay, we don't have those things just yet. And we don't know what's the value of the NPV when, you know, these two projects are actually going to have the same NPV, but that's fine. It's, it's actually okay. It's actually not a problem. So we can go ahead and put it like that. Okay. What I do want you to be able to visualize is that our crossover rate, right, is a point at which the NPV of project A will be equal to the NPV of project B. What we could do now, and this is like a proof, and I, I hope it makes sense and I hope it works for y'all, but we could go ahead and kind of draw like a line here. So we'll draw a line. Okay. So this vertical line here is our crossover rate. Okay. And we can take an arbitrary point, a, a random point, and I'll put it, call it in red. We can take that at this point here, okay, the NPV of project A will be equal to, and I guess I, I want to make this a little cuter, so sorry about that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to erase this a little bit so it really looks good. Oh, I didn't even know it so pretty. Anyways, so I'm going to write this right here, is that at 5.8%, the NPV of A will be equal to the NPV of B, okay? So what's awesome here is that technically what you could do, and I know is I'm taking time and you could skip through a video, but it's just some pretty cool stuff. I'm getting actually kind of excited. We could go ahead and draw a line for project A that goes through this crossover, this like specific point. The reason why it's going through a specific point is because we know that given different Ks, you're gonna have a different NPV, right? You're gonna have a different value. That's totally fair, okay? And we can draw another line. We'll use, I guess, pink for project B. That's gonna go through our random point, okay? And the reason why, by the way, that these two, these two lines, so the line representing project A and the line representing project B are going through this little red point that I drew is because once again, that's the crossover rate. That's the point at which the NPV of project A will be equal to the NPV of project B. It's awesome stuff. And of course, when you have 0%, well, your NPV is going to be a given point. When you have the IRR for project A, which is at 12.8%, the NPV is going to be equal to 0, right? Remember, the IRR is a point, is the K 
at which the NPV of a project is equal to zero. And that's why they lie on our essentially horizontal axis, on our x-axis. That's why we're able to just plot them on that one dimension. That's why I started with that, okay? Whereas the 5.8%, notice how we can use like any point within that 5.8% and we're still gonna come to the same conclusion. So what I wanna be able to highlight right now, what's awesome here, the really good takeaway is that we're able to figure out when is one project bigger than another project? When is it yielding a higher NPV? And right here, we're able to say that if we are at any point before 5.8%, we notice that the NPV of project A will be greater than the NPV of project B. And what's also awesome is that if we go call it here, any point that is essentially beyond 5.8%, beyond the crossover rate, we're able to say, well, look at that. At this point, the NPV of project B will be greater than the NPV of project A. And if that's not clear to you, if that sounds like black magic, well, if I take this random point here, and I take this random point here, this will be project B, and this will be project A. So clearly, the, if this is like call it five, and this is three, clearly project B is greater than project A, okay? So just like that, you're able to answer the question. Well, here we will say that any point, okay? So any point before the crossover rate, of 5.8%, NPV A will be greater than NPV of project B. Now I'm not gonna continue and say, well, any point after 5.8%, NPV B will be greater than NPV A. But what I really wanna to showcase to you, and I hope this is clear because we took a random point Okay, but if I were, and I'll put it in like a random color, so it's really, it really like pops off. But if we took like, call it a intersection at this point here, right? Because we just took a random point, right? Along the vertical axis of 5.8%. We just drew a vertical line. But if I would have taken a ran another random point, so on an exam, you don't have to take like a specific like vertical point. We could have done this as well. Right? We could have made our lines run through it. And you would also see here that at this point here, project, okay, I'm using the same color, so it's a little bit strange. So let's do this, for example. Check this out. It's awesome. You notice that even here, we come to the same conclusion that the project A is greater than project B. And that here, project B is greater than project A. So what's awesome and the real key takeaway here is that on an exam, you can literally choose any vertical point, right? On your horizontal axis. I mean, sorry, on your vertical axis and just try to like graph it out such that you have a visual representation and you can make sure that you have the right answer. And that's exactly what we did here. Another really good high level tool to use and you can add this to your formula sheet. It's simple. Well. Notice how they gave us these two values, 12.8% and 13.7%. The higher IRR that they gave you, so the higher IRR and the, I guess, smaller IRR, so I guess bigger IRR and smaller IRR, well, you could write the following rule. If you have a smaller IRR, well, essentially what you could say is that 0% to the crossover rate that smaller IRR will yield a higher NPV. Okay, then you could say that the crossover rate all the way to IRR that's higher, okay, so higher IRR, in that case, the smaller, I guess the higher, sorry, will yield a better NPV. So notice how the IRR of project B, so project B with an IRR of 13.7%. It, if we use this rule, well, we're saying that from the crossover rate all the way to 13.7%, it 
project B will have a higher NPV. And then if you look at the smaller IRR, well, because of the rule, you know that from 0% all the way to the crossover rate, well, the smaller IRR project will have a higher NPV. So I'm just writing it quickly. I'll probably write like a, a note here just to make it like actually official and that you could review this. But the idea here is that you could do this in two ways. You can do this by using the graph to visualize what the heck is going on and to get the answer in a second. But if you don't want to do that and you want to become a pro and you just want to add a quick rule onto your formula sheet, well, you could say once again as follows. The project with the smaller IRR will have a bigger NPV from 0% to the crossover rate. And the project with the higher IRR will have a higher NPV from the crossover rate all the way to its IRR, okay? So that's a tool that you could use. And I hope this makes sense. I hope this video kind of gave you some context on just how you want to like visualize these range of NPVs type of questions. And yeah, I don't know, this was kind of fun. I liked it. Um, hopefully you liked it as well. And if you want to find more resources and if you want to find more tools, well, ISMA Helps really is the hub for business students. You can go on my website, you're going to find a bunch of PDFs, a bunch of automated questions that are always going to be randomized and are always going to give you like the best perspectives for the exam with step-by-step -step solutions. And just another range of like 200 plus questions per class was so pretty awesome. Or you can go on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, you're going to have all of those questions solved step-by-step -step with a fool like me trying to make it fun and a little bit more interactive for you. And then you also have past exams, past crash courses that you could kind of walk through on my YouTube channel. If that doesn't work out, you can just write this my helps on Google, Twitter, Facebook, you'll find something that's going to help you out as well. Anyways, that said, hopefully this was fun for you. Hopefully this empowered you just a little bit and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.